Howdy, West Side. I have wanted one of these all my life. That is a black felt Stetson hat. Yeah, these are not cheap, which is the reason I've never bought one. But a friend of mine gave this to me this week. He'd bought it a few years ago, and it didn't fit him just right because it's huge. But I'm thinking I may keep it. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Small thing. I'm learning to be grateful for the small things. Big things. We want to be grateful for those as well. And the things that fall in between. I had a strange moment last night. I'm watching the Texas K-State game, and I find myself cheering for K-State. Maybe I'm a Kansas Texan now instead of a Texacansan. I don't know what that means. The Scripture talks about the importance of us having constant thanks, being constantly grateful. And we're in a series right now called Constant Contact where we're looking and saying, is prayer just the end or is it a means to something deeper? And we're discovering that it is a means to a relationship with Christ that is one of constant contact, that Jesus literally wants us to be grateful in all things. That's the reason that we're doing this Ignite thing tonight. We're inviting all the leaders of our church to workshops at 5 and then at 6 to uh, all the folks that are involved and participate in serving here to come for a rally in this room. Where we're going to express our gratitude for you and for what God does through you. And then next weekend it's the reason that we do a Thanksgiving offering where we say, God, you've been good to us this year. And we invite everyone to bring your biggest gift of the year just as a way to say thanks for being in my life. Thanks is a big deal. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Dan Sutherland, one of the pastors here at Westside. Find your notes, whether you're at Lenexa here in the big room, in the gallery, over in the venue, whether you're up at Speedway, or whether you are listening in on the net and watching. Hey to all of those people, or maybe you're up at the prison, you'll get this tonight. We are purpose-driven note-takers. Mine actually have colors on them and everything else to try to help me to finish on time, which is a major accomplishment. But I hope you'll write some things down today. Here's the big idea for the series, the key to having consistent peace. Wouldn't we all like that? Consistent peace, consistent joy, consistent awareness of God's presence. How do we do that? It's to stay in constant contact, write that in your notes, with God through prayer. Constant contact. Not just 911, hey God, I'm in trouble, I need some help contact. We all know how to do that one. But the constant contact idea. And in these three weeks, we're looking at three ideas. Last week, write this in, we talked about constant asking. The God of this universe, this blows me away, he says, ask me, bug me, talk to me, tell me what's going on, tell me what you need. Today, we're going to look at the idea of thanking God, constantly thanking God. How do you live in constant thanks? Not just on Thanksgiving Day, but how do we live that way all year round? And then next week, the biggest concept of all, which is constant trusting how do I trust that God is in control? How do I believe that he is at work? How am I sure that he's going to show up? There's a lot of scripture in here this week. We're going to start in Matthew, go over to, to Thessalonians, grab Philippians in the middle. Listen, I hope you're bringing your Bible. You can follow along. Listen to what Jesus said about this constant contact idea. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking. See the constancy there? Not just ask once and you'll get it. Not just seek once, you'll find it. Not just knock once, the door's going to be open. Stay at it. Be constant, 
and you will find. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, everyone who knocks, the door will be opened to them. And then look at what it says in Philippians 4, our focus passage for this series. Don't worry over anything whatever. Tell God every detail of your needs. My wife reminded me not long ago, she said, see there, God's a detailer. Evidently, he is. When it comes to what you need, he wants the details. When it comes to what you're concerned about, he wants you to tell him about it. Tell him every detail of your needs in earnest and thankful prayer. That thankful prayer part is our focus today. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will keep constant guard over your hearts and your minds as they rest in Christ Jesus. Would you circle rest? The result of us having constantly asked God and constantly thanking God and constantly trusting God is rest. You get peace in your soul. It's a pretty good thing. And then another verse for our focus today, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I want you to circle that word in, I in. Pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. That's where we begin today. Three concepts, three ideas. Listen for the one with your name on it on how we can be in constant thanks to God. First idea, we have to be constantly thankful in everything, not for everything. I am amazed at the confusion among Christ followers about this idea. It is impossible to be thankful for everything in your life. How many of you have had something really crummy happen this week? Hands up. Something crummy. When it happened, did you say, woohoo? Thank you, Jesus. Give me some more. You know, another bill. Woohoo! Man, double it, Lord. Could I have another dose? Or a flat tire? Hey, Lord, could you get the back tire too? I mean, it, you, we got guys with little white coats to take you away if you're constantly thankful for everything. There's good in life, but there's bad and there's ugly in life. There's stuff going on in this world I'm not thankful for. I guarantee you there's stuff going on in this world that God's not thankful for. So the focus is not be thankful for. This is where we get in trouble. People say, how could there be a good God if there's bad stuff going on in the world? Wrong focus. It's not that it's all good. Scripture never says that. The focus is to be thankful in everything. God, I don't know why that happened, and I don't like it, but help me to remain grateful through this. Lord, I don't understand why I'm having this trouble, but help me trust you to show up and be bigger than my trouble. God, I don't like this crummy stuff, but God, help me to stay focused on you and how good you are to me. That's being thankful in something instead of being thankful for something. Turn to your neighbor and say, sometimes I'm thankful for you. Sometimes. Sometimes. I mean, the reality is you're not always thankful for everybody in your life. But you can be thankful in the relationship, in the circumstance. How do we do that? We do that by trusting what God tells us in Romans 8, 28. For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. If you're going after a love relationship with Jesus... And if you're pursuing his calling, his purpose in your life, then you can trust that he uses the good and the bad and the ugly to do awesome things. There's nowhere in Scripture it promises that only good things happen to Christ's followers. In fact, it promises the opposite. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. So far, he's been right. That is the reality that we deal with. We've got to know the difference in being thankful for and being thankful in. Years ago in South Florida, our church did a whole lot of mission work in the country of Peru. And our focus particularly was on a group of, of Indians called Quechuan. The Quechuan Indians are a 16 to 18 million person group in the country of Peru. They're not in the big cities as much as they're stretched across the mountains. 
And out of 40 million people in Peru, 16 to 18 million are Quechuans. One of the largest groups in the world that prior to just a few years ago had no translation of the Bible in their own language. And the lady that we worked with down there was a widower named Donna. She worked at the translation center that helped produce this Bible. And her husband had been martyred. He'd literally been killed for his faith. The Shining Path, which was a Maoist guerrilla organization in the mid-90s, just did not care for what he stood for, and he was taking Jesus to the Indians and taking Jesus to his people, and they literally pulled him over on the side of the road one day and killed him. And as I listened to Donna, a lady about my age, tell the story, tears would run down her face. She wasn't thankful for her husband being dead. She wasn't thankful for the fact she had two teenage girls to raise on her own. She wasn't thankful for being, being deprived of his presence and his love. But she handed me this Bible. This is about three years after the death of her husband. She said, Dan, I really wondered what good God could bring out of Romulo's death. But it catalyzed the rest of the church to raise the support and the attention and the scholars we needed to finish the Quechuan translation of the Bible. And 16 million Quechuans today can read God's word in their language. Because my husband died. Now, I can't read a word of this Bible, but it is precious to me. And it sits in my office as a constant reminder that in the midst of the bad and ugly of life, God is still at work. Don't get focused on the crummy. You focus on the crummy, you feel crummy. You look crummy, you act crummy. No crummy. Turn to your neighbor and say that. No crummy. No, we're not doing it. What are we going to do? We're going to look for God. We're going to be grateful in everything. In fact, I know for some of you, this has just been a tough year. I mean, some of you have dealt with depression this year. I get that. I've been there. I watched my wife struggle with that for two years. Was I thankful for her being depressed? No. Did we manage to stay grateful in it? We did. Some of you have lost jobs this year. Been there, done that. Guys, I got fired from a church. You know how bad you have to be to be fired from a church? <laughs> I mean, you got to be bad. Stay grateful in everything. In the middle of the circumstance, we stay grateful. Second idea of constant, constant thanks is that constant thanks is always something you give and sometimes something you feel. Now grab that. It's always something you give. Sometimes it's something you feel. This is a major truth. Some of you are here today because God wants you to grab this particular truth. The verse says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing in everything, give thanks. Circle the word give. In everything, give thanks. There's a heresy floating around 21st century Christianity, and it goes like this. Well, if I don't really feel grateful in my heart, I shouldn't say it because that wouldn't be authentic. No! When did we flip to a feelings-based Christianity? Here's how that work in your marriage. Well, if I don't really feel like being faithful to you tonight, honey, I may mess up. Would that work? Or if I don't really feel like going to work tomorrow, I may just not go. In the, and I'll just tell the boss I couldn't show up and be authentic. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. And I know you want authentic employees. I mean, I keep hearing this thing float around of, you know, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not going to fake it. Listen, obedience is never faking it. God says, give thanks, period. There are moments that you feel grateful, and wow, those are awesome moments. But there are moments where giving thanks, listen, is a sacrifice. In fact, the Old Testament talks often about the sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise. When is thanksgiving a sacrifice? When you don't feel like it and you give thanks anyway. 
In fact, my guess is that our Father gets more blessed when we give thanks when we don't feel like it than when we do. Pagans can give thanks when things are good. They do it. But God says, if you are following me, you want to give thanks even when the feeling is not there. Write this into your notes. It's a big, big idea. You cannot constantly give thanks, which is what Scripture says to do, if you wait till you feel like it. How would this work with your kids if they walked in and said, Mom, I just didn't feel like making my bed today, and I couldn't be authentic and do it, so didn't make the bed. Kids, try that at home. See how that goes. Actually, you don't want to try that. We have to understand that sometimes obedience is just plain obedience. Sometimes being grateful is just plain choosing to be grateful. Sometimes it's, wow, Lord, this relationship's not where I want it. This job's not where I want it. My life's not where I want it. But I trust you. And because I trust you, I'm still going to give thanks even if it's a sacrifice. Integrity, guys, write this in, is doing the right thing when you don't feel like it. Everybody's made this push on feelings. No. Integrity is I'm going to do what God has asked me to do, whether I feel like it or not. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Third idea, we have to be constantly thankful in everything, not just for it. We have to be constantly giving thanks even when we don't feel like it. I love this third one. Constantly thank God for his provision. Oftentimes, that is an advance experience. Constantly thanking God for his provision is oftentimes an advance experience. Don't miss this. This is important. Scripture says rejoice all the time. That's hard enough. Then it says, pray without ceasing. That's even tougher. And then in everything, give thanks. Wow. Here's how it works. God, here's my need. You've invited me to ask you, and I'm asking you. And I thank you in advance for your provision. We think of thanksgiving as after the fact, it's time for me to give thanks. And that's true. And I'm convinced that we spend far too little time thanking God for what we've asked him to do. If you spent six months asking God to do something, I don't know. Seems like to me we ought to spend six months thanking him. Does that make sense? I mean, I prayed for my kids to get out of my house for years. I'm going to spend years thanking him for it. <laughs> Those of you that are laughing don't know. But it's coming, and you will know. It's this idea of, wow, Jesus I'm going to stay thankful, but it's bigger than that. It's God, here's what I've asked you to do, and I thank you in advance for it. How does that work? It works this way. Write it into your notes. When I thank God in advance for his provision, it activates my faith. It activates my faith. You guys know from my past stories that light bulbs is not one of my gifts uh, you know, I can walk in a room, and if one light bulb's working and three are not, I, th I still think there's light in the room. You know, it just doesn't bother me. But my wife is a four light bulb out of four working person. So a couple of weeks ago, she did her normal nice reminder. Honey, I'm sure you haven't noticed, but there are two of the uh, four lights out in the kitchen. Appreciate you fixing those when you get a chance. And she's right, I hadn't noticed. A week later, they're still not fixed. Here's what she said to me Saturday a week ago. Honey, I want to thank you in advance for fixing those light bulbs. <laughs> That's wrong, people! That's wrong! And I kind of thought, whoa, that's just wicked right there. You know? Guess what I did yesterday? Fix the light bulbs! And the problem now is she's going to keep thanking me in advance. How much more? Does our Father who says, ask me for what you need, thank me for it in advance, and watch me do it, how much more does he respond when we give thanks even before it's done? Even before it's done. It's a huge idea. It activates our faith. I think it works like this. I've got faith, and God works, and I thank him for it. 
And then I get faith to thinking before it happens, and my faith accelerates out again. And it's like my gratitude and my thankfulness keep producing more and more faith. In fact, write this in. I believe this is absolutely true. Never thought about that till this week. Have you ever noticed that grateful people are always people of great faith? They always are. I mean, there are people saying, wow, God did it again. And they believe him for even bigger things. Wow, look at what God did. And they believe him for bigger and bigger things. Here's the deal. If you and I are in charge of our lives, I understand why we're not grateful. We ought to be scared spitless. There's a Texas term. We ought to be anxious. We ought to be worried. If I'm in charge, wow, let's all be worried. But if I have surrendered my life to Jesus Christ and said, because you're in charge, I'm going to ask you for everything I need. Because you're in charge, I'm going to thank you in advance for doing it. Because you're in charge, I'm going to trust you to get it done. What have I got to worry about? It's the idea of God is bigger than my circumstance. And he is. It's the idea that God is going to work beyond what I need him to do. It activates my faith. It pushes it down the field. It is a huge, huge thing. Look at the verse. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Would you circle who belong? Who belong to Christ Jesus? going to push this envelope. You ready? One of the characteristics, write this in your notes, big deal, of a person that belongs to Jesus is constant thanks. In fact, constant thanks is a defining characteristic of those who fully belong to Jesus. Don't put your notes up. I've got one other thing for you to write in, and then we're going to spend some time thanking God today. God is truly working in this heart. Gratitude flows out of these lips. Jesus said you can tell what's in a man's heart by what comes out of his mouth. So if I'm asking God and I'm thanking God and I'm trusting God for his provision in my life, gratitude comes forth. My two-year-old grandson continues to be one of my greatest teachers. I'm amazed at how children grab things about God so much quickly, more quickly than we do. I think it's part of why Jesus said, unless you become like a little child, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Translation, you can't see God at work if you don't see it through the eyes of a child. He has two favorite expressions these days. One of them is, what's that? What's that? And if he's really excited, he says it three times. What's that? What's that? What's that, Papa? And if you don't pay attention, he just says it louder. What's that, Papa? What's that? Just this constant curiosity thing, and most of the time I love it. <laughs> he's got this second expression that he uses dozens of times a day. Every time you do something for him, he says, Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Or if Mary does something. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you, Dada. Thank you, Mama. It's thank you all day long. Thank you. Can't even say it right. <laughs> thank you, Papa. And here's my question. If a two-year-old can get it, why can't we? He gets it. He just lives in this gratitude thing. We don't need to wait till Thursday to say, wow, the food's good and the football's good and the fun's good, so I'll be grateful for a moment. Gratitude is a constant contact deal. And the more grateful I am to the God who is my Father, the more he does in my life to stretch my faith even more. We've deliberately left time today 
for us as a church to express our gratitude. Here's how we're going to do it. You've probably noticed in the last couple of weeks we've been blurring the start of the service and the end of the service just a bit. Why are we doing that? Because it's so easy in our American mindset to think that worship starts with the first song and it ends with the last prayer, and then we just go out and do life all week, and we come back and we'll worship for another hour next week. Romans 12, 1 says this about worship. Present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That's worship. That's worship. What we do on Sunday is just the icing on the cake. Maybe it's just the cherry you put on top. It's the life we live all week. So we've been blurring the start and the ending of worship a bit. Those of you who came early today, we had a time of prayer and scripture reading going. Last week at the end of the service, we invited people to stay here in the room and, and seek God. We're going to do all of that today too, but here's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to lead us in a time of prayer, and the band's going to come and lead us in a song of thanks, and here's what I want to ask you to do. During that time of prayer, thank God for the small things. Thank him for the big things. And thank him in the crummy things. Everybody here has got some of all that going. Small stuff, big stuff, crummy stuff. You don't have to be thankful for the crummy stuff, but you can be thankful in it. And the way we're going to do that is all through that song, we're going to invite people. If you want to come and stand here in front and just be grateful to God. Interesting, we had lots of people come ask him last week. We ought to be just as quick to thank him. Or if you want to kneel where you are and say, say a prayer of thanks, that's great. If you just want to, want to stand and say it silently in your heart, we're going to sing our thanks and say our thanks. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I am grateful for you. You're the big thing in my life. I am so blessed to have you and to see that you want to be in constant contact with me. God, I am grateful also for the little things today. So many of those. And Lord, there's some crummy stuff that I want to be thankful in too. So in these few moments, Lord, as we sing our gratitude to you, I ask that you'd help us also to say our gratitude to you. And the Lord, as, as you prompt us, we will respond. We're thankful. We're thankful for you. In Christ we make this prayer. Amen.